right, oh, good evening everybody, Fran Brown Pilates here. Um, so what I thought I'd do today is just to do a class um, focusing on how Pilates can help uh, improve with lower back pain. It, it, it's a massive subject and as you know I design all my classes really around that. But I just thought I'd recap um, a little bit about why I do things the way I do. Um, okay, so first question, what causes low back pain? Um, obviously, again, this is, this is a big, big subject. Your low back here, what, can, what causes um, a lot of pain in the low back is the overarching um, of the low back here, compression in the vertebra. Um, and obviously, as we get older, when I say get older, I mean over the age of 25, we do lose natural collagen, natural cushioning, if you like, in the vertebra. Um, so you've got less cushioning, if you like. So any movement that we might do in the wrong way without a, a support network can cause um, nerves to get compressed um, and it causes pain and sciatica and so forth. Um, also, you may be, you have one leg shorter than the other, uh, one side of the pelvis tilted. Um, so Pilates can help re rebalance that. Um, but really what we can do, three things we can do with Pilates. Number one, uh, we can lengthen the lumbar spine, so stopping that overarching. Um, and, and the same thing, tucking under too much the other way causes overstretching the low back and can cause a lot of pain. So we can lengthen through, uh, not just the lumbar spine, but the whole of the spine. We can work on flexibility and mobility. But we need to work on um, a, a support network, if you like, of, in the body. So we need to strengthen the muscles um, around the spine, abdominals, low back, buttock muscles, shoulders, but we need to create a strong framework which can support your back when things go a little bit wrong um, as we get a bit older and so forth. So I'm just going to show you the support network here. So I've got my pole here. So your support network, so if you're standing sideways, you can see my spine. I mean, no one's got perfect posture. Let me turn my hand the other way. Okay, so your support network here, can you see three points of connection? I'm standing tall. So here, hips, buttock muscles, shoulder blades, and the head, obviously. So this is my support network. Now, if, if the support network goes slightly wrong, as in bad posture, at the computer a lot, mouse, this sort of thing, um, look what happens. Neck goes forward, can cause neck pain. I'm immediately losing my support network. So if we learn, not just to strengthen the muscles of the support network, but if we then learn, teach ourselves to move in the correct way, so we're keeping that support network, okay, we've got a better chance there of not having low back pain, um, if you like. So that sort of just sums it up <laughs> a little bit. Okay. So we're going to warm up as normal, um, but we're just going to focus on a little bit of strengthening. Again, those that support network, a little bit of mobility, shoulder base stabilisation, and just some basic exercises today. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, of course, if you have never had any back pain, or <laughs> you don't have any back pain, please feel free to add in your own more challenging options. Work a little bit harder if you want to. Okay, so neutral spine position, I was saying, so the important thing is not to overarch that low back. So lumbar spine length, and that's why we work on our neutral spine position, so the lumbar spine isn't lengthened. Also, it's not over rounded that way. Shoulder blades back and down. Okay, up onto the toes, breathing in, breathing out, abdominals in, hinge the hips back. Again, don't overarch that back, lengthen it, draw the abdominals in. So we're working on lengthening the spine, creating more space, stretching out where we may have been losing um, space in between the vertebrae. All right, so relaxing the arms, head, neck and shoulders, straightening the back of the legs as well, a little bit there. Um, if you have a lot of low back pain, we sometimes we feel very tense, very tight in the back of the thighs. So that's one of the reasons why we do um, rolling back up the back of the leg stretches as well. If you're tight in the low back due to overarching, you may find uh, you're also very tight in the hamstrings. Okay, up onto the toes, breathing in, breathing out. Hinge the hips back, rolling forwards. 
Good, push the hips back, but draw the abdominals in, so you're lengthening the spine. No overarching, relax the upper body and slowly come back up. Good, okay, so back to your position on your mat. Again, you adjust my position. Think of your three points of connection in the spine, which also includes keeping the chin back. If you let the chin come forwards like that, again, we're losing that support network. So support network here. Okay, let's just loosen up the shoulders a little bit as we normally do, breathing in, breathing out. We're focusing on those points. So we're lengthening through the spine, lengthen, not letting the low back arch. So finding your neutral spine position. That's it. And engaging the core a little bit. So core doesn't, doesn't just mean abdominals in connection with your low back. It also means busted muscles um, and pelvic floor. So pelvic floor, busted muscles engaged. Loosen the shoulders and work on those shoulder blades. Shoulder blades back and down, opening up the chest without arching that low back. Tuck it under a little bit so we're lengthening. Breathing in, breathing out. Good, one after the other. That's it. And of course, don't forget about your knee alignment. Knees should always be level with second or third toe. If you repeatedly do uh, move with the knees in the wrong place, it can weaken the hips. Again, that can cause a weakness um, in the low back. So all very important. Okay, breathing in and out. Shoulder blades back and down, lengthening through the top of the spine. And then arms, both arms up, all the way back. Breathing in and out. In. All right, now I want you to again lengthen through the spine, draw the abdominals in, lumbar spine lengthen, stretching up from the shoulder blades, but feel the stretch through the spine. Now again, try not to do it like this. Elbows level with the ears, breathing in, breathing out. So abdominals in, lengthen through the spine, reaching up, and then all the way back. Keeping that position, keeping that three points of connection here, breathing in. Breathing out now, stretch and lengthen, top of the head, arms, and then reaching a little bit more. Drawing the abdominals in, lumbar spine lengthened, knee alignment. Good, and all the way back. Good, arms behind you, shrugging the shoulders, and relax. So when, you, when you're doing this, we're doing the normal exercises that we do, but really focus. If you look at me from the side, the three points of connection, I'm not pushing that low back out, I'm not tucking under too much. I'm keeping the chest open, the shoulder blades engaged, breathing in, breathing out. So I'm working the back muscles, I'm working the abdominal muscles, working the buttock muscles, breathing in, breathing out, and then side to side, a little bit more. Lengthening from the upper back. Okay, and we're going to focus on loosening up our head and our neck. Again, very important with your three points of connection. We need to get that chin in that retracted position. So if you're a little bit pushed forward, we can work on the mobility to improve that. So relax the chin forwards and back, breathing in, breathing out. Remember, this is an isolation. So from the shoulders down, you're not moving at all. Keep your three points of connection, abdominals, buttock muscles, lumbar spine lengthened, chin forwards and back, breathing in, breathing out. And lift the chin up and head forwards. Breathing in as you lift. Breathing out, remember abdominals, buttock muscles, core muscles engaged. Breathing in, breathing out. Turn the head to the side. And then roll the head forwards. All the way, breathing in, breathing out. So loosening up the neck helps you to maintain your chin retractive position. And with the shoulder base back and down, that helps as well. Breathing in, breathing out. Good, back to the center, hand over the side of the head, stretch the head across, shoulder down. Good, and the other way, breathing in, breathing out, stretch. And then head forwards, tuck, tuck, tuck the chin in. Okay, so from here, we're going to do our toy soldier exercise, which lengthens the spine, works the shoulder blades all at the same time, works the back muscles tummy as well. Um, so you keep the hands down by the side of you, I don't know whether you remember this one, so from years ago, like a toy soldier, 
one arm goes forward, one arm goes back. Okay, but we're doing it with lengthening the spine at the same time. So breathe in, breathe out core muscles. Number three points of connection in the spine, lumbar spine lengthened. So you're gonna raise one arm up like this. Try not to hunch your shoulders. Keep your shoulders down. Take the arm behind you. The other one goes the other way. Now at the same time, I want you to stretch the arm up from the shoulder blade, stretch the other arm down from the shoulder blade without the shoulders tw uh, twisting up and down. Lengthen through the spine, breathing in, breathing out, then take both arms back a little bit more, draw the abdominals in, lengthen and stretch, good, and then swapping, breathing in, breathing out. So this lengthens the spine, works the back muscles, engages the shoulder blades, breathing in, breathing out, lengthen and stretch, remember abdominals, busted muscles, so we're strengthening the muscles around the spine, as long as we're keeping our neutral spine position, our three points of connection, no overarching, no two tucking under, reaching up, breathing in, breathing out. Now we're going to hold it there, a little pulsing action backwards, shoulder blades back and down, abdominals in, hopefully you can feel the back muscles working just under the shoulder blades, maybe around the core as well, and stretch up and back, little pulsing action backwards, lengthening, stretching, Great, okay, arms out in front, so we'll just loosen that up, open the shoulder blades, turn the hands inside out, stretching up, up and over. So I think when you're doing this, think of lengthening the spine here, stretch the spine, abdominals in, elbows level with the ears, stretching up from the shoulder blades, up and across, good, breathing in, breathing out, up and over. Good, nice and slowly. Lengthening through the spine, draw the abdominals in. Breathing in, breathing out. Okay, and just there, we're just going to do a little bit. So mobility is important, particularly in the upper back, but mobilizing the upper back separately from the lower body. So bend the knees a little bit, and we'll just do a little bit of side to side with no pulling the low back, keep the abdominals in, and just try and move the rib cage side to side. That's it, you can take this arm on back a little bit as well. Shoulder blades engaging. Good, and just side to side, that's it. Mobility, upper body, keep your abdominals in. No twisting the hips here. If it's uncomfortable in the low back, keep the movement really small. And then you can build up on that. Good, okay, so let's go into our stretches. <clears throat> Inner thigh stretches, and again, just to recap here, our three points of connection. So you're keeping the three points of connection as you go into the side lunge. So if you're here, you see I've got the three points of connection. So as I go back, make sure you're not losing that connection here. So sink the hips back, draw the abdominals in, don't let the, don't push the lower back out, keep the gym attracted. And just have a little look down at your knee. Make sure the knee and the thigh haven't moved forward. So breathing in, Breathing out, shoulder base back and down, abdominals in. Can you see how I'm, I've got my support network here? Okay, so it's all very well to have your support network, to have strong muscles, good posture, etc. But then we need to take that into moving. So that's how here you can simulate if you're actually going to reach forward and pick something up. You need to keep the support network there. Or say you were going to pick something up, go up into a cupboard. If you've been working on your mobility and your support network, your back muscles, your hip muscles, pelvic muscles, bust muscles, is gonna support you as you go into that movement. So if you, if you bent over like this and you let the upper body collapse, all the strain goes into the low back. So it's about moving that way, if you like, okay? So just practice that, shoulder blades back and down, breathing in, breathing out. So you can keep the hands on the legs if you want to, and keep the hands behind you. To remind you about that postural position, breathing in, breathing out. Okay, we'll hold it one side, a little bit wider, sink the hips down a bit more if you want to turn the feet up as we normally do. Good, and the other side, a little bit wider, turn the feet up, still keeping those three points of connection, abdominals in, lengthening that lumbar spine, lengthening all the spine here, chin retracted, Sinking down a little bit lower. 
Brilliant. Okay, switch around. So we do our hip flexor. Again, focusing on the upper body here, keeping the three points of connection here. So try not to stretch forward like this. Breathing in, breathing in. Tip the pelvis under. Now draw the abdominals in, elbows level with the ears. Turn the hands inside out. So when you stretch up, think of the spine stretching, reaching up. From the shoulder blades, again, no hunching. Keep the shoulders relaxed, arms back. Stretch up from the shoulder base, lift the chest up and back slightly, draw those abdominals in, feel that stretch. Good, and back, and swap the other side. So focusing, lengthening the spine. Other way, breathing in, breathing out. Tip the pelvis under, stretching up, lengthen through the spine, draw the abdominals in, reaching up, elbows level with the ears. Chest up, back slightly, breathing, breathe out, draw the abdominals in, tip the pelvis under. Good, and relax. Good, front of your thigh stretch. As I said, stretching is very important as well for your low back. This is for the front of the thigh. Posture, three points of connection, chin retracted, very important, breathing in, breathing out, tip the pelvis under, heel in towards the hip. And then if you can balance, take the hand onto the foot and add that in, breathing in, breathing out. Good, and the other side. Breathing in, breathing out. Tip the pelvis under. Hand off the wall if you can. Hold the ear or hold the foot with both hands. Breathing in, breathing out. Good. Okay, so we're going to do our squatting with our three points of connection. So we're adding movement in, um, as I was explaining before. But we're going to add in um, an exercise with the arms and the upper back, again, to work our back muscles, work our postural muscles. So you can use one of the stretchy bands if you want to. You can use your light weights or you can use nothing at all. We can use our own body weight here by making a fist if you want to. Okay, so we're going to go, as normal, go into our squatting technique. Now remember, if you are suffering with your low back at any point, you might find the squatting technique um, a little bit uncomfortable. So you can always make it just a very tiny movement like that, but keeping the three points of connection in the spine. So as you go down into your squat, keeping that support network, can you see? Good, breathing in, breathing out. So just a little way first, make sure the knees uh, don't go further forwards than the end of the toe. Squeeze the bust muscles as you come back up. Dominoes in, push the heels into the floor for more connection there. Okay, so making sure you're maintaining that position and then we're going to do a lat pull down. So working um, the back muscles, working the shoulder blades at the same time. So you've got two ways of doing this. If you're able to take the arms behind you, like this, we're gonna do that. If you're very tight, very um, tense, or upper back's a little bit rounded, you may not be able to do that. So if that's the case, we can just bring the arms in front like that. You'll still be engaging the right muscles. So here we are. Breathing in, breathing out, abdominals in. So as we squat back, bend the elbows, and you're gonna take the arms behind you like that. So that will help you engage the shoulder blades, work the back muscles, making sure you're drawing your abdominals in. Don't let that low back arch. Breathing in, breathing out, coming back. Now when you come back up, squeeze the bust muscles, push the heels into the mat, keeping the arms in that position. So really, again, work those back muscles. How much resistance you use is up to you. You can uh, roll the band up a little bit more if you want to. Keep the chin retracted, three points of connection there as you go down into that squat. Again, this will simulate um, what you do in everyday activities as well. So keeping those three points of connection. You, you've all done your lifting techniques where um, you're lifting something up like that. It's the same thing, keeping the shoulder blades engaged and um, Muscle muscles engaged, core muscles engaged, of course, which is your support network there for when you're moving. Breathing in, breathing out. So you can go down lower if you want to, you can speed it up as normal. Work at your own level. So again, as I said, if it's uncomfortable, taking it behind you, coming in front, don't forget to squeeze the bust muscles, push the heels into the mat. Can you feel the back muscles working here? Good, shoulder base, keep the chin retracted. There, and a double time action there. 
Good, fantastic. Okay, pop the band down. So again, just a little bit um, uh, about Alexander Technique. I don't know if you've heard about Alexander Technique. Again, all it is is about um, revisiting how we move certain movements that we do and correcting them. Because if you're moving um, repeatedly um, in, the wrong, in the wrong way, engaging the wrong muscles, not your core muscles, that can cause injury over time. So just a quick example, um, if you're uh, drinking a cup of tea, holding a pint of beer, even lifting up the kettle, pouring it into a cup, probably without realizing it, you could repeatedly lift from the shoulder, which again causes overuse in that shoulder joint. It's like you're using um, like the computer with the mouse. This shoulder can get quite um, impacted, very stiff, it can roll forward, so you end up in this position here. Can you see that? So if you're doing any movement like that, say you're lifting up a cup of tea or a pint of beer or a glass of wine, the correct way to do it is to lift the hand to the mouth. Then you're using the right muscles. You're actually using, if you're keeping the shoulder base back and down, the shoulder blade engaged here. If you do it like this, can you see what it does to your posture? You're losing your support network straight away and it might be causing great early stiffness immobility in that joint there. So just a little bit, something to remember there. Okay, let's just go into our deep stretches, right arm over left, lock the elbows, push the elbows away, breathing in, breathing out, and extend the forearms further forward, opening the shoulder base, good. And then the other one left over right, push the elbows away, arms forward good and back and then stretching up the other way shoulders down raise the arms up open the chest again don't arch that back draw those abdominals in check your knee alignment chin retracted you've still got your three points of connection there good and relax good well done okay shoes off so we're going to go down onto the floor so make sure you've got your mats, got your grips, if you're going to use the grips. And then we're going to do some more uh, on that support network, working the muscles um, and the core muscles. Nice, taking it nice and slowly today. Okay, let's put my pole out the way. Good. So as up onto the chest, breathing in, breathing out. Hinge the hips back. Again, don't over arch. And we're going into our deeper stretches. So again, often if you have a um, sciatica, you're quite tight in the low back. Um, the back of the thighs will be quite tight as well. So it is good to do some stretches like we do at the end of the class. We're doing them here to lengthen the back of the thighs, the muscle muscles, and this helps to stretch out the low back as well. So bend your knees, breathing in, breathing out, extend the hips, extend the legs, feel that stretch. Calves, back of the thighs, that's the bustle muscles. Low back, draw the abdominals in at the same time so your back isn't over arching or over rounding. You've got your correct position there, breathing in, breathing out. Good, alternating, bent one, straighten the other, hinge the hip back. And of course, if you're working on your flexibility, do hold the stretches a little bit longer. Breathing in, breathing out. Good, swap position, so turn the toes inwards, bend and straighten, breathing in, breathing out, draw the abdominals in, lengthen the spine, alternating, good, turn the feet out, bend and straighten, breathing in as you bend, breathing out as you stretch, and then alternating, one and then the other, Good. All right, feet back to the centre, get the left leg out in front of you, sink the hips back, hold the end of your toe, stretch the toe back, and turn the foot inwards and outwards. Good, and the other one, stretch the foot back, turn the foot inwards and outwards. Good. All right, hands on the mat, so walk your hands forward, into your double dog stretch, using the grips if you want to, and really Focus here on lengthening um, the whole of your spine, keeping the shoulder blades back and down, and obviously abdominals in as well as we've been practicing. 
So here, so think of your hands, stretch your arms back away from your hands. Again, no hunching the shoulders like this. Shoulders back and down, shoulder blades engaged, hips up in the air. Lengthen that spine, really concentrate on lengthening. Draw the abdominals in as well. So we're working the muscles around the spine, strengthening at the same time as stretching. Then come up onto the toes and stretching back. Draw the abdominals in. Hinge the hips back, no rounding the shoulders, no rounding the, the lower back here. Stretching up and down and then alternating. That's it. Okay, so here, coming forwards into your plank position, if you're able to, remember you can always do this on your knees. Now, again, your posture here is important. Try not to do this or this, or drop the hips down too low. So body's in a straight line, Bring your head forward so it's a little bit further forward than your hands if you can. The more you come forwards, the more you're strengthening your support network, as in your upper body, your shoulders. Shoulder blades back and down, so no rounding here. Chin retracted, so we're lengthening through the neck, lengthening through the spine. Don't let the hips drop down too low. Now breathe in, breathe out. Draw those abdominals in and try and feel that connection through the core. That's abdominals to your back. Breathing in, breathing out. And if you want a little bit of a rest, stretch back, come forward, draw the abdominals in, chin retracted, lengthening the spine, stretching back, breathing in, breathing out. And of course you can hold this um, a little bit longer if you want to. The important thing is, is engaging the core and having your posture. So in this position here, I've actually still got, hopefully, still got my three points of connection. So shoulder blades back and down. Abdominals in, I'm not letting the hips drop down. Can you see what happens there? Or if I'm rounding here, I'm losing that support network. So breathing in, breathing out. Draw the abdominals in. Shoulder blades back and down. Excellent. Okay. So again, just working on our support network and stretching our spine as well as strengthening. We're just going to go into our Superman exercise, which when done properly, as in really slowly, is very effective. Um, if you want to, if you're coming from one of my more advanced classes, as I said, you haven't got any low back pain, please feel free to do some plank variations, work a little bit harder if you want to. Okay, otherwise we're going to go into our Superman exercise and do it really slowly, focusing on drawing the abdominals in, lengthening the spine, so we're working, as we draw the abdominals in, lengthen the spine. We're working the muscles around the spine, so strengthening, but also lengthening, so we're increasing that gap between the vertebra, how I mentioned earlier, how that compresses over time. Um, so we can concentrate on that. So on all fours, wrists under the shoulders, knees under the hips. Make sure you've got your three points of connection here. So you're not rounded, not, not letting the hips drop. So three points of connection here. Breathing in, breathing out. Draw those abdominals in. Slide the leg away. Keep it in touch with the floor as long as possible. Slide the hand away, keeping it in touch with the floor as long as possible. Then lift, so you want the body more or less in a straight line. Breathe in, breathe out, draw the abdominals in, stretch the arm. Now stretch the arm from the shoulder blade. Try not to stretch from the top of the shoulder like that. Shoulder blade, stretch the leg from the hip, draw the abdominals in and stretch. Now if you can squeeze this bosset muscle as well, okay, we'll be strengthening the muscles around the bicep muscle, around the pelvis, around the hips. And of course that supports and strengthens your low back. Breathing in, breathing out, lengthen. Draw the abdominals in, stretch the arm from the shoulder blade. No hunching, stretch the leg, point the toe, flex the foot, squeeze the bicep muscle. Really lengthen through that spine. If you do this slowly, you really will feel this the next day. You really feel you work the muscles of the shoulders, of the spine, of the back. Lengthening, point the toe, flex the foot, and back. Breathing in, breathing out, stretch, and lengthen. Abdominals in, squeeze the bicep muscle, stretch the arm from the shoulder. Okay, I'm just going to add in a couple of variations. So from here, keep the arm and leg more or less straight, lower and lift. Breathing in, breathing out. And when you lift, make sure you haven't let that low back over arch. Draw the abdominals in, lengthen, down, stretch, lift and stretch, down, stretch, good, and the other one. 
lower, breathing in, breathing out, lift and stretch, down, lift, abdominals in, squeeze the busted muscles, stretch the arm, breathe in, breathing out, great. Okay, other side again. So this time we're going to bend the elbow, bend the knee, bring them towards each other. Again, without the back collapsing, still keep your spine in that neutral position. And then lengthen, breathing in, breathing out, stretch and lengthen, breathing in, breathing out. Good, and the other side. Bend the knee to the elbow and extend, breathing in, draw those abdominals in, lengthen the spine. Remember you're stretching the arm from the shoulder blade. Squeeze the bust muscle. Good. Okay, well done. And relax. Go stretch back. Sit back on your heels. Arms stretched out in front of you. Relax your back. Relax your arms. And this is a, a great stretch for your low back as well. If you're very tight in the low back, if you're able to get into this position or near enough, this will help to relax and lengthen the spine. Again, creating hopefully more space in between the vertebra, which um, can be compressed as we discussed, as I discussed earlier. So breathing, <coughs> breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth, relax the arms, relax your back, relax your body. Great, good, come back up. So we're gonna go into our cat stretch as normal, breathing in, breathing out. So here, draw the abdominals in, Open the shoulder blades, tuck the chin under. So again, this is our shoulder blade. We're opening the shoulder blades now. Breathing in, breathing out. So lift the chest, shoulder blades back and down. Draw the abdominals in. So make sure you're not overarching the back here and you're not over lifting the chin. So focusing on strengthening the upper back, but also lengthening through the spine here. Rounding and retracting. Great, good. Okay, roll over. So we're going to uh, go over onto our black. I'm not gonna do the rolling down today. Um, so if you do suffer with your low back, sometimes that rolling down can be quite problematic. I'm going to do a couple of different exercises today. Okay, so ball at the back of the head, if you want to, activation band if you want to. So again, just reiterating here, your neutral spine position. So if you push your fingers under the small of your back, if your fingers can get all the way under, um, this is very, very general, but if your fingers can get all the way under, you're actually too arched. Um, so you're not able to actually draw those core muscles in properly. If you push, relax your low back into the mat a little bit more so your fingers get stuck, you'll automatically find that neutral spine position where you can engage the core, draw the abdominals in um, properly and at the same time. So of course, when you draw the abdominals in, you've got your neutral spine position. We're working the muscles not only around the spine, but around our Pilates muscle, which connects our tummy to our back muscles. So it's like drawing it all together. Again, um, working on that support network I was talking about. Okay, so breathing in, breathing out, opposite arm and opposite leg. If you're having um, any back, low back pain, often it's quite good just to do this, like the legs first the arms on their own and then add it in. So breathing in, breathing out again, close that rib cage, draw the abdominals in, make sure the back isn't arching as you stretch the leg. Point the toe, flex the foot, draw the abdominals in. I did mention earlier about instability in the pelvis. So when you're doing this exercise, it's important that the hips also don't twist. So if you put your hands on your pelvic bones here, when you extend the leg, Try and make sure you're drawing the abdominals in, you're keeping a neutral spine position, you're squeezing the buttock muscle so the hips actually aren't moving side to side like that. It's important you keep the pelvis level so you're strengthening the muscles around the pelvis in the correct position, not in a twisted position. Okay, so add the arms in and focus on lengthening through the spine. Stretch, point, breathing in, breathing out, stretch the arm back from the shoulder blade, point the toe. Flex the foot. So I am going through basics today because we're working on uh, low back and stability, improving low back pain. So if you're joining me and you're finding this too easy, please go into your normal uh, tabletop variations. 
um, to work a little bit harder if you want to. The important thing is here is to close that rib cage, draw the abdominals in, make sure the back doesn't arch. So I'm adding both arms in now, press the shoulder blades into the mat. Breathing in, breathing out, lengthening, stretching. Okay, so we're going to work on, as I said, strong busted muscles. So from here, we're going to bring one knee up and one knee down, but not only are we keeping our pelvis level and neutral spine position, we're going to squeeze the busted muscle as we lift. So how this can help, if you've got one side stronger than the other, one pelvis maybe not so strong or to tilt, it works one side separately from the other. So a really good one to do. Breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth, close that rib cage, neutral spine position. Squeeze the left busted muscle, bring your leg up to tabletop, hold it there, breathing in, breathing out, repeat that. Abdominals, busted muscle, squeeze it if you can, and bring it back down. And we go to the other one, breathing in, breathing out, squeeze the right busted muscle. I know some of my clients say they, they can't actually squeeze one busted muscle um, on its own. Anyway, squeeze both if you, if you can't. Breathing in, breathing out, squeeze the busted muscle, draw the abdominals in, and then again, and bring it back down, keeping your neutral spine position. So you should feel one side, strengthening, breathing in, breathing out, squeeze that busted muscle separately from the other. So give it a go. Again, we can work, we can ramp this up a little bit, but just bearing in mind, just squeeze the busted muscle when you're doing this. So we can come up, squeeze the busted muscle, squeeze the other one, up, squeeze it, down, down, squeeze the buttock muscle, up, up, down, down. And then we can go into our tabletop as usual, but with that difference of squeezing the buttock muscle, be really aware, squeeze the buttock muscle, neutral spine position, closing that rib cage, drawing the abdominals in, breathing in, breathing out. So you're working your core very deeply. You can add the arms in if you want to. Again, so you're lengthening through the spine at the same time. Uh, and when you have the arms in, your back will want to arch. Don't let it. Squeeze the busted muscle. So we're doing really the same exercises that we normally do, but we're squeezing the busted muscle a little bit more. So even if you want to go into this one, squeeze the busted muscle, stretch, lengthen through the spine, make sure that back doesn't arch. If you feel the back arching, maybe bring the hands down onto the mat, come back down to the previous level. You're working at your own level there, stretching, lengthening, closing the rib cage, lengthening the spine, make sure that back doesn't arch, breathing in, breathing out, good, lengthening, stretching, and remember to squeeze the buttock muscle with this variation. Yeah. Squeezing, good, okay, and relax. Bring the knees into the chest, Circle the hips round one way and the other way. Good, okay, we're going into our spine stretch. So arms out to the side, level with your shoulder, keep your shoulder base pressed into the mat. Cross the feet over if you find it more comfortable. Breathing in, breathing out. So again, this works on our flexibility, our movement in the spine, if you like. So your upper body stays flat facing that way and you're just moving the lower body um, so again, helping with that the mobility, flexibility in the low back. Only do this as far as it's comfortable, making sure the opposite shoulder blade doesn't come off the floor. Now your, hips, your hip is coming off, but you're still keeping your neutral spine position. So don't go into that position you were before, maybe like arching the low back, draw the abdominals in, keeping that lumbar spine lengthened, even though your hips coming off the floor. Nice and slowly, press that spine into the mat, breathing in, breathing out, legs the other way. That's it, draw the abdominals in. Don't let the low back arch. Breathing in, breathing out, lengthening. If you're having a bad back weekend, it's really uncomfortable. Just keep the feet on the mat and just literally go side to side, just a little bit. Okay, feet on the mat, hands down by your side, and you're just going to roll that head side to side, and up and down, breathing in, and that's still keeping your neutral spine position, lengthening that spine. Okay, so roll over, 
So we're going to do um, our sideline clamshell exercise today, which is, as you know, very, very good um, exercise for engaging the buttock muscles. Your bus strong buttock muscles help strengthen your lower back, help strengthen your pelvis, and of course also help to strengthen your knees, funnily enough. If you've got very weak buttock muscles, the knees can roll in. Strong buttock muscles helps with that knee alignment, so it's a very, very important exercise. Okay, so you're going to lie on your side, resting your head um, on your arm or the ball. Um, and with the clamshell, okay, your feet are sort of tucked under and we're opening and closing like a shell. So again, if you're using the band, adjust the band. Bring it a bit lower if you want um, a little bit more in get core engagement there. Okay, so make sure you've still got your three points of connection in the spine. Don't let the low back push out, arching. Draw the abdominals in. Feet just off the floor, squeeze the feet together, breathing in, breathing out, draw the abdominals in, and you're gonna open the top leg. Now, although you're just, you're only moving the top leg, you're gonna work the leg underneath as well. So I want you to squeeze both buttock muscles, breathing in, breathing out, squeeze both buttock muscles, open that top leg, draw the abdominals in, make, make sure your lumbar spine is lengthened, but also we can work the inner thighs here. So a bit of a scooping action, push the inner, inner thigh sort of inside out as you go into that movement. Okay, neck nice and long, breathing in, breathing out, squeezing both buttock muscles, breathing in, draw the abdominals in, lengthen that spine, breathing in, breathing out. Good, hope you can feel that. If you need some more resistance, bring the band a bit lower. Again, if you haven't got the band, you might find you need to do a few more of these, you might want to take that leg a little bit higher. So breathing in, breathing out, squeeze both buttock muscles, hold it there, and then we're just gonna do a little pulsing action. Again, squeezing both buttock muscles, inner thighs. Good, and relax. So feel free to do a few more if you want to. And then we're gonna roll over and repeat it on the other side. Okay, so tuck the feet under, if you tuck the feet under even more, obviously you're going to work a little bit harder. So adjust it to you, to suit you. If you have um, very tight hamstrings, you might not want to take the feet under so much. Okay, so three points of connection in your spine. Make sure you're not overarching. Breathing in, breathing out. Squeeze the feet together. Open that top leg. Squeeze both buttock muscles, the one underneath as well. And at the same time, get that scooping action with the inner thighs. So you're activating those as well. But this is a great exercise because you're working all the leg muscles, all the buttock muscles. And of course, hopefully we're lengthening the spine here, drawing the abdominals in. So we're working the muscles around the spine, working all our core muscles. So work at your own level here, breathing in. If you're finding it too much in the thigh, just take the feet a little bit. Don't have them tucked under so much. Good, remember, squeeze both buttock muscles, scooping. Squeezing, breathing in, breathing out. Okay, we're gonna hold it in that top position. Do a few more if you want to. And we're just gonna do a little pulsing action. So both buttock muscles, inner thighs, squeezing. Good, okay, well done, and relax. All right, roll back over. Take the band off if you are using the band, activation band. And we're going to go into our low back stretch um, and our final stretches. You're going to need one band or another. Of course, flexibility, particularly in the back of the legs, is very important uh, for your low back as well. I'm just going to put some music on. And we go into that section. Okay. So first of all, into your low back stretch. I do love the stretch. And remember, if your low back is very tight, it's really good to hold this stretch a little bit longer. So first of all, stretch the legs, stretch the arms back. You find your low back will come off the back a little bit, off the mat a little bit here. But stretch the arms back from the shoulder blades, tuck the chin in, and really lengthen through the spine. Stretch, stretch the legs the other way, point the toes, flex the feet, lengthening. 
and then bring the left knee in towards your chest. Grab the back of the thigh with both hands, draw that leg in, draw the knee in, and press your lower back into the mat. Breathing normally, and you want to hold that stretch for a good 10 seconds. Curl up if you want to, and of course you can hold it a little bit longer. If your lower back is very tight, um, I did run over this in another um, class, so you relax, and then you hold it again up to three times for about 10 seconds and you'll find your low back it stretches it out lengthens if there's any tension or tightness there that will really help so relax do it again breathing in breathing out curl up if you want to great all right stretch out again point the toes flex the feet bring the right leg in draw that leg in press your lower back into the mat Again, hold it for about 10 seconds, breathing normally. And if your low back's really tight, relax it. And then bring it back again, breathing in, breathing out. Dominoes in, press that lower back into the mat. <coughs> okay, one more time each side. Breathing in, breathing out, press that back into the mat. Lifting the head off the mat is optional. Draw that leg in, press your lower back into the mat. Good, and then the other side. Great, okay, fantastic. So grab um, your acti activation band or your stretchy band, and we're gonna take it around the end of the left foot first. Good, so as I said, your flexibility in the back of the legs is very important, particularly your low back. If you're having a bad back episode, sometimes you'll find the back of the thighs are very tight. So it's good to stretch them out. If you're having problems and you can't keep your neutral spine position, keep this leg slightly bent while you work on this flexibility. Otherwise, stretch the leg out. So we've got pelvis level, neutral spine position, point the toes, breathing in, breathing out, flex the feet. And then add a bit more resistance with the band. If you want to, add a bit more resistance, draw the leg back a little bit further without the hips coming off. Point the toes, flex the feet, straighten the leg a little bit more. Hold the foot in the flex position and turn the leg inwards and outwards so we're getting a deeper stretch there through the bottom muscle, back of the thigh, back of the calf. Good, hold the band in one hand, take the left leg across and move that leg forwards and backwards. Keep the foot flexed. Good. All right, swap hands. Move over a little bit. Foot flex, turn the leg outwards. So we're activating, stretching out that inner thigh. This time, keep the pelvis on the mat. And then move that leg forwards and backwards. Still keeping that foot flexed. Inner thigh stretch. Good, hand back. Okay, down. Same thing now with the other leg. Right leg up in the air, left leg out, point the toes, flex the feet. Breathing in, breathing out. Abdominals in, neutral spine position, and then work on that flexibility. When you feel ready, you can take the leg back a little bit further, straighten the leg a little bit more, or add a little bit more resistance with the band to flex the foot to increase that flexibility. All right, hold the foot in the flex position, turn the leg inwards and outwards. Good, okay, take the right leg over to your left, keep the foot flexed, and move that leg forwards and backwards. Good, bring the leg back, swap hands. This time keep the pelvis on the mat, Flex the foot, turn the leg out slightly as you take the leg out, turn it out as well. So you're getting that inner thigh stretch. Again, move that leg forwards and backwards. Great, okay, bring the leg back. And now we're gonna finish up with our hip stretch. So level pelvis, neutral spine position as before. So turn the leg out, so if you feel a stretch in the hip. Now the important thing is here, that whether you can see, Sometimes the, uh, my clients do this wrong. So they turn the leg out and let the pelvis drop. You need to keep 
that level pelvis. So you can always put your hands on your pelvic bones here. Make sure you've got your neutral spine position, breathing in, breathing out. Keep the pelvis level, then turn the leg out without the hip dropping, without the pelvis moving, and you'll get a good stretch there um, in the hip joint. Other the leg, breathing in, breathing out, level pelvis, neutral spine position. Turn the leg out. into our relaxation. So stay in this position if you want to, you can roll over um, into that child's post stretch uh, we did earlier on. If you're on your back, legs bent, legs straight, knees apart, up to you, just find a comfortable position. Again, you need to keep your neutral spine position, don't let the back arch. Hands down by your side or across your chest. And you're going to focus on relaxing all the muscles. So start off with the neck. Roll it in a circle if you've got, particularly if you've got the ball, it's quite nice. Okay, relax the arms, relax the shoulders. You can always tense them if you want to. And then relax. Relax the upper body. Relax your back, relax your hips, and relax your legs. You want no tension in the body anywhere. And now we're going to focus on that Pilates breathing. So remember, deep breath in through the nose, long, slow breath out through the mouth, so your breath's a little bit deeper, a little bit longer for your relaxation. And then we're adding in our thoracic breathing, our Pilates breathing. So ribcage expanding as you breathe in through the nose. Trying to hold it for a few seconds. And breathe out through the mouth. Long, slow breath through the mouth. Ribcage closing. Again, hold it for a few seconds. And repeat that sequence in your own time. Focusing on total body relaxation. Rise and fall of the ribcage. As you take deep breaths in and out. And learning to hold those breaths a little bit longer. So your breathing slows down. And you find your body goes into a state of relaxation. So focus on that breathing. Rise and fall the ribcage, totally relaxing the rest of the body. Particularly the neck as well. Make sure you're not relaxing the neck, like with the neck hyperextended like that, keeping that level, that neck level there. Okay, we're going to slowly come back up. So roll over, you can always stay down a bit longer if you want to. Again, up to you. Come up on all fours and repeat what we did earlier in our cat stretch. Rounding the shoulder blades, retracting, and then a little bit lengthening through the spine. Really lengthen. Don't overarch the low back. Don't lift the chin too high. We're focusing on the spine here. Lengthening. All right, then downward dog stretch. Again, focusing on lengthening the spine. Stretch the arms back from the hands, shoulder blades back and down. Hips up in the air, draw the abdominals in, no arching the back. Bend and straighten, alternate knees. And walk the hands back up towards the feet. Slowly coming up, breathing in, breathing out, tuck the chin in. All the way back up, excellent. Back to your start position, rolling the shoulders forwards up, back and down, breathing in. Breathing out, arms behind you, reaching up. Cross the hands behind the head. Bring the head forward, tuck the chin in. Good, now relax. I hope you enjoyed that. So that was just a little bit of a, a breakdown of Pilates for um, if you have any low back conditions, strengthening your low back. Um, but all about that posture, three points of connection, which is very important. And um, our, creating our support, our support network for our body, for our spine. Um, if you have any questions on this, 
please email me or leave me a message. I can get back to you. And I hope you enjoyed that. So I'll see you soon.